Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. Today's topic is integrating ACE or IIB with ITX. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be showing how to integrate ITX with either ACE or IIB. I'm going to be using a couple of methods, the traditional integration using the ITX node in the toolkit of either ACE or IIB. The second method is a loose couple integration. In IIB or ACE, you use the HTTP request node to call an ITX map via the ITX REST API. The ITX REST API can be running on the same or on a remote server. There are distinct advantages to running the two items of software in this loose coupled method, which I shall go through during the demonstration. We're going to start the demonstration in the IIB 10 toolkit. Now this toolkit ha has integration with ITX9. Both parts of this demonstration can be recreated with the ACE11 toolkit integrating with ITX10. So let's start with Flow2. Within Flow2 I have an MQ input node which will read any message dropped onto test Q1 and at the end on the MQ output node it will drop the resulting message onto test Q2. In the middle we have a TX node and if I click on that and show the properties you will see that it's calling the two upper map in the project one directory. Let's temporarily switch to the transformation extender perspective and then within project one you will see that I have a test.mms file. I open this map source file and you will note that I have a two upper map. It has a single input card and a single output card with a simple uppercase rule to transform anything received to output. Nothing too complicated there. OK, so let's close the map and switch back to the integration development perspective. In bar file 2, I have the um, flow 2. And as you can see, I have that currently deployed on to my uh, node. If I now switch to the MQ Explorer and show you the queues, any message that I drop into test queue one, test message one, will arrive on test queue two, which I will browse now, and you will note that it has been capitalized. There we go, test message one, all in capitals. Okay. So back to the integration flow designer perspective, that is the traditional method of integrating a TX map in either IIB or ACE using the TX node. However, there is another way. I'm going to temporarily delete all flows and resources from my node ready to deploy a different type of flow. And let's show you that flow now. Let's close flow two and go into flow three. As you can see, flow three also has an MQ input node reading messages from test Q1 and an MQ output node writing messages to test Q2. In place of the ITX node, however, we've got these two new nodes in the middle, an HTTP request node uh, making a, call, a REST API call to a remote ITX server and a compute node which is used to remove the HTTP headers from the output. Let's pause the toolkit demonstration here for a moment and just temporarily switch to the ITX design server where you will note that I have exactly the same um, project, project one, and exactly the same map to upper defined in my design server. If we have a quick look at the rule here, we have upper case of it in one. It's exactly the same map and it's called to upper. If I go to my deploy section here, I have a package called to upper and in that package I deploy the maps and the map is called to upper. 
and I deploy it to my REST API. Switching to my REST API endpoints page here, you can see that I have deployed this map and it has resulted in two endpoints running the map synchronously or asynchronously. We're going to be concentrating on running the map synchronously for this demonstration. If I bring up a command prompt, I can show you that the curl command to call this uh, REST API um, is on screen and the string of data that I'm sending in here is just a string of data and when I press enter the curl command can call this REST API and we get string of data returned to us in capitals. Okay so that's shown you that the REST API is using exactly the same map and it's been deployed from design server. Back to the toolkit now and we can see that we have a bar flow 3.bar which has the contents of this message flow which I'm now going to deploy to my node. Click drag and drop and flow 3 is now running. If I switch to my MQ Explorer and drop a second test message onto test Q1, test message 2, put and then I browse test Q2, you will note that both the original message and now the new message are in the queue and both been capitalized. You will note that the one that was done by the um, uh, node is slightly showing a slightly different put application name from the one that is done through the HTTP uh, service. But apart from that, the actual result in the queue, the test message itself, is exactly the same. I, I kind of skipped over the um, message broker second node there in the flow 3, so I'm going to go back to that now. In this compute node, we have um, a standard piece of compute where we call copy entire message. And we set the output route to be the input route. But here's an extra line of code that we use to remove the HTTP response header. We set it to null. Otherwise, we end up with HTTP headers, uh, which were part of the um, HTTP request node in our output data, which we don't want. So that, uh, that little piece of ESQL is in there just to remove those. So there we go. Two methods of integrating ITX with either IIB or ACE. First method using the TX node and the second method using the HTTP request node to call the REST API on a, in this case, remote server. A few words on the advantages of using the software decoupled design. The first advantage, flexibility. Products are less version dependent, which in turn makes updates much more simple. With IIB10, you're using ITX9. With ACE11, you're using ITX10. With this decoupled design, you could, for example, use IIB10 with ITX10. The second advantage, scalability. The REST API call can be made through a load balancer. This enables you the option of scaling up the system to cope with huge demand. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.